Um, this feels far more formal than I thought, but also more chaotic in the same breath. Uh, they say you should never do work with children and animals. Uh, we have some adults in here who are animals and we have lots of children. So, no, guys, I really appreciate you coming along. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know, I had no idea what to do when I, I thought I'll do a book launch, but I spoke to some published authors and they're like, oh, you have to do a launch. You have to. So I was like, okay, well, let's just make a big kids party. Because honestly, when I wrote this book, it's just because when I was a kid, all the books that I read, I loved. You know, like Roald Dahl and Around the Twist and like Enid Blyton and then starting to get into Lord of the Rings and all these things that just occupied my imagination. And then I guess going back as an adult and looking at things like Ninja Turtles and The Karate Kid, they're kind of crazy. Like those ideas are legitimately crazy. And I thought to myself, man, jujitsu is such a, an awesome thing, Brazilian jujitsu. And I've been obsessed with it forever. And I always wish that I could have found jujitsu when I was like 10 years old. Like if I had found Brazilian jujitsu when I was 10 years old, my life would be totally different. Now the lucky thing for me was I found Taekwondo and that changed my life. And I know for some of you guys out there, you may have done other martial arts, but I feel like the great thing about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is it brings people together. And it's the community aspect of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is incredible. So guys, this book was uh, a long time in the making from uh, inception to where it is now, a physical thing. So thank you so much for being here and supporting this thing that I'm doing. Now, uh, pre pretext, there's still one or two mistakes in this first issue. But I'm telling you, in five years time, when you can no longer get this issue with mistakes, you can sell it on eBay for hundred grand. Just saying. So, count your lucky stars. No, guys, I'm gonna read a fairly important moment from the book where Jugo meets Maro. So, just to put a little bit of context on this, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but uh, as a kid, having your parents tell you, you're gonna join the family business. My father did it, I did it, and you're gonna do it. And that's kind of what happened to Maro. He was a reaper and his dad is deaf. And he was told that he had to be a reaper and he didn't want to be a reaper. So his dad kicked him out of the family. And that's why he's stuck in gray stains. Jugo, on the other hand, is just a complete weirdo and no one understands him. And so they just happen to accidentally meet. And I'm gonna read the part in the book where they meet. So this is that. Jugo pushed through the long grass just outside the bounds of his backyard and swatted away clouds of pre-dust mosquitoes. Fibs, who's the three-eyed frog, where is he? This guy, just so you've got context on who Fibs is. Three-eyed frog, I'll explain why he has three eyes later. No, I won't, you have to read to find out. Um, Fibs, the three-eyed frog, was sitting on his shoulder. He said, don't worry, buddy, buddy, I'm not going to ditch you. We're just going for a walk. There are plenty of bugs out here for you to eat. Jugo pushed through the crowd of ferns and shrubs. Having climbed his favorite rock, he affectionately named Giant's Tooth. He skidded and scrambled down over its smooth surface. Beyond it was a large open clearing. This is where Jugo spent most of his free time. He put fibs down. Go and explore, my friend. Fibs paused turned to look at him and wink. Then, with a massive bound, he disappeared into the undergrowth. Being amongst nature always calmed Jugo down, and he walked happily, kicking leaves and expecting the space that he knew so well, he knew it better than his own bedroom. He balanced his way along an ancient tree, fallen when grey stains first settled. It was now covered in a thick carpet of moss and lichen. Jugo was distracted by all the beautiful colors in the canopy of the forest. He wasn't paying attention and missed his footing and treading into thin air, he fell, plonk. Jugo dusted himself off and glanced around. His skin prickled with the sense that someone was watching him. Spinning around, he focused his vision into the shadows of a huge tree's hollow cave, a gray, almost faded figure sat hunched. The glow of two blue eyes 
peered out of the dark. Hugo jumped back. Who are you? What are you doing here? His words brought the hunched figure to life. The figure stood up and moved towards him. Are you saying you can see me, human? The fact that this mystery figure could speak startled Jugo even more. Of course I can see you, but, but stay back, okay? Because I know jujitsu and I'm not afraid to use it. The shadowy figure lurched forward. Jugo backpedaled and stumbled. Then he struck a fighting pose to, to make him look like he wasn't scared. You're saying that you can see me. The figure sounded a little bit friendlier this time. Expecting to be attacked, Jugo, through wincing eyes and clenched teeth, whispered, of course I can see you, but what are you? Maris stepped out from the shadows and revealed his small skeleton in all its bony glory. He was overjoyed. He tried to run and get close to the human, only he wasn't aware that this guy knew he existed. Mara tripped on a root uh, and he fell, landed face first on the ground. With a crack, his head popped off and rolled towards Jugo, stopping at his feet. Mara's skull looked up at Jugo and tried to smile. I'm Maro. I am the exiled son of death. Jugo was mystified. Was this a ghost? Was this a dream? Was it a hallucination? Why was this skeleton in the forest? Why is it talking to him? Even for Jugo, this felt like pretty weird. Apologies, human. I am experiencing a sensation, as you live in, living beings say, of excitement. Because you are the only human who has acknowledged my presence on this side of the cycle. I was just thinking I might spend all of eternity by myself which would not be so terrible. But since you have acknowledged me, I feel different. My bones are lighter. I have this sense of goodness. I feel warmer. How do you humans call it? Is it happiness? Jugo was in shock. He couldn't run. He was frozen to the spot. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess you could call it happy. Did you say that you're the son of death? Jugo wanted to run away, but his curiosity wouldn't let him. Mara's body picked itself up and dusted off the leaves, retrieved the skull and placed it on top of its spine, spinning the skull like you would screw on a toothpaste cap. Apologies again, human. I did not mean to make you afraid. I'm not fully aware of all your human customs and niceties, but I learned quickly. What is your name and your purpose in this frequency? Mara stepped forward to shake hands with Jugo, which he had observed humans do as a motion of greeting. As he lifted his bony foot to step forward, the frightened boy Jugo hit him with a swift foot sweep. Whap! It sent Mara flying up into the air and crashing down to the ground. Jugo was uh, a little bit impressed and surprised. It was a pretty good foot sweep considering he'd only one, done one jujitsu class. Mara stood up. Is that how you complete a greeting in human interactions? His bright blue eyes shone. Um, are you a ghost? Are you an undead zombie? Jugo asked. I am Maro Grimm, the 1,112th son of death. The Grand Reaper, also known to you humans as the Grim Reaper. I am formerly of the shadow. I have been exiled here to this frequency for giving life instead of taking it. As far as I can observe, you are the only entity who recognizes my existence. With this, Mara held out his hand in a gesture to shake. Jugo hesitated. Is this not how humans commence interactions? They put their extremities together and move them in coordinated sequence to display structural integrity? Apprehensively, he moved his hand forward Jugo didn't want to leave the strange skeleton hanging, so he gave the bony digits a side five. Slap. Marrow looked like he had his friendly gesture rejected. Now make a fist like this. Jugo demonstrated to Marrow to make a fist. Okay, so now we're gonna bump our knuckles together. Not entirely sure what he was meant to do, Marrow punched Jugo in the knuckles. Crack! Ah! 
Go. Not that hard, bony. It's meant to be a light bug. Mara shrugged, doing his best to understand this strange human creature and its weird customs. I do not understand this ritual, but I'm keen to learn. Shall we repeat this process? Jugo shook his head and rubbed his knuckles. The day had gotten dramatically more interesting. Look, my name's Jugo. This is the forest. It's part of Greystains. And I don't really get why you're here, son of death. It's kind of weird that a ghosty like you, whose job is to take life, would do the opposite and give life. Mara scratched his skull and considered the statement, nodding his head in agreement. It is a big job guiding spirits from this part of the cycle to the next place. Much help is required. And so my parents created a workforce to help them carry out the task. You humans keep replicating. And therefore, reapers have to continue to keep the life cycle in balance. For the new to come, the old must go. At least that's what my dad says. I just did not want to be a reaper because I was told to do it. It was not compatible with how I felt. Jugo felt like he understood what Mara meant. But why can I see you? Where are all the other reapers? And why can't I see them? Mara asked, do you have special powers of vision? Perhaps my frequency is stronger, so you can see my form, but not theirs. I am here because death expelled me from the shadow for failing the Reaper Rite of Passage test. I didn't just fail, I intentionally sabotaged the entire test. Mara felt quite proud for defying his father. Expelled? The shadow? The Reaper test? Okay, Skelly Bones, slow down. You're gonna have to begin at the start, but first I have to find my friend. From the nearby trees, Fibs leapt and landed on top of Jugo's head. Splat. Noticing Marrow, Fibs immediately took a crane fighting stance. Fibs' third eye opened. Retreat, dark spirit. This voyager is not ready for your journey. I am his guide and you will not take him from his path. Come no closer. Marrow looked a little stunned. How strange. This small creature is communicating without moving its feeding hole. This is a curious thing. This, there is a misunderstanding. I am no longer a reaper. My father stripped me of my powers. I have never taken a life and I never intend to. Mara turned to Jugo. Human, tell this creature that I intend you no harm. Fibs hopped down onto Jugo's shoulder in a back stance, his small hands shaped like knife blades. Do not trust this dark spirit, young Voyager. It will claim your spirit and stop you from reaching your destiny. Jugo patted Fibs on the back. I think it's okay, Fibs. Thanks for sticking up for me. But I don't think Marrow is here to steal my spirit. Jugo looked at Marrow. You're not gonna steal my spirit, are you, bony? Marrow shook his skull. Well, anyway, I need to get home. Jugo turned to walk away. Um, uh, uh human, uh, Jugo, uh, cease your action. With your permission, I would like to stay within a close proximity to you so that I may observe you. May you teach me about this frequency and human customs and life's procedures. Would this be an acceptable action? Jugo and Fibs looked at each other doubtfully. Jugo shrugged. Okay, bony boy. I don't know how we're going to explain this to mum, but we won't leave you alone, stuck in exile. You can be our friend. Uh, I do not understand this exchange. What is the meaning of this term, friend? You know, a friend. Someone you hang out with, talk about stuff with, make jokes about. Someone who makes you feel good when you spend time with them. Like associates, comrades, homies, brothers. You know, you're with us now. You're part of our team. The newly formed band of misfits made their way through the forest. Jugo peppered Marrow with questions about everything related to reapers. Marrow didn't mind one bit. No one ever really asked him what he thought. As an eternal entity, Marrow was far less hasty than his new human companion. Marrow had never been paid so much attention in all his life. Somewhere in between his ribs, he felt a warm and light sensation. It was actually happiness. For the first time in 1200 years, Marrow had a friend. Yeah, 
So a little bit of context around that, even though it sounds a bit strange. There is a three-eyed frog, there is a skeleton. Um, even though everything is not explained in this book, this is part one, there is a part two. Uh, in lockdown, I wrote 120,000 words. Uh, originally, I was trying to just write a comic. Uh, I was like, I'll do a comic, it'll be really easy. And then I just started writing and writing and writing. And Anyway, I spoke to the editors and they were like, kids are not gonna read 120,000 words. Adults don't read 120,000 words. You're lucky if you can get them to read a tweet, right? Oh, this guy will read it. But uh, that's lucky me that I have you. I appreciate you. But um, essentially, guys, there is a book too where a lot of this weird stuff is explained. This small town where Jugo grows up, Grey Stains, is not all that it seems. It's a small, crappy industrial town, and there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. So. This book, um, thank you for coming and supporting it. There is plenty in this book which is not explained, but don't worry, it will be explained. But you just gotta hang in there, but hopefully I can get through the next six months to bring you guys part two. But um, no, I really appreciate you guys showing up. Um, and I had no idea when I started writing this what everything it would take to get it here. I would not have been able to do this without the help of my lovely partner Ola, my mum and dad, my sisters and my brother and everyone that's helped me be here and also obviously you guys for getting behind it. So um, as much as I'm very grateful um, for just being able to have the opportunity to do it, I'm very grateful for all of you being here. So thank you very much.